As gas prices continue to rise on what seems like a daily basis, you might be saying, what can I do to be able to ensure that I can not only put gas into my car, but get to my job or get my kids to school? If you find yourself in that position, watch this video through until the end, and I guarantee you that I'll share some practical tips that we've implemented, which has ensured us to continue to get from point A to point B. So let's hop on straight into today's video. The first thing that you need to do is inflate your tires. According to the AAA or the American Automobile Association, only 17% of cars have properly inflated tires. And you might be saying, what does that have to do with anything? Well, by having properly inflated tires, you can actually increase your fuel efficiency by up to 3%. So you can go a lot further just by putting air in your tires. The second thing that you can do is possibly move closer to your job. I know that this is not possible for everybody, uh, you might say that the market is not favorable at the moment because of inflation. There's lots of other factors that we need to be taking into account. It's not just as easy as just selling my house and moving closer. But for some of you, it might be. right? I, I look at myself a couple of years ago. I was commuting to my job and it took me one and a half hours to get to my job and then another one and a half hours to get home. If it rained, two hours one way, two hours the next direction or to get home. And what that meant was that I was spending a lot of money on fuel compared to when we moved a lot closer. So instead of driving one and a half hours, it was a 25 minute commute. And as a result of that, we ended up saving a lot of money that we were incurring in terms of money that we put into the car for fuel. The third thing that you could do is consider whether now is the time to find a new job, maybe a job that is closer to your home. And as a Christian, I believe that this is not something that you just do lightly and you don't just make decisions based on money, but pray about it. If you are at peace and, and you are trusting God for maybe a new job and a new door opens up, maybe now's the time to step out by faith and to take that new job. The fourth thing that you could consider doing is working from home. With the pandemic taking place, lots of companies pivoted to various different sorts of models. Some pivoted to a 100% work from home model Others pivoted to a hybrid where you worked in the office two or three days a week and you worked from home for two days. There are certain instances where it's not possible. For example, if you work for a nonprofit or a charity where you need to be at your particular organization where you are serving individuals, or you might work in retail where you need to be in a store in order to serve people. So it's not always possible, but you might find yourself in a position if you had the discussion with your employer that they might be open to you working from home either entirely, 100%, or for part of the week. And that could in turn translate to you saving money that you would be spending on gas. The fifth thing that you could consider is whether or not it's possible to work longer days. So I find myself in a privileged position where we are able to work four by tens. And what that means is we work four days a week, Monday through Thursday, for 10 hours a day. And as a result of that, we don't go into the office on a Friday. And as a result of that, we are saving money on gas. So instead of commuting to work five days a week, we're commuting to work four days a week. And in turn, we are saving money that we would normally have incurred had we had to drive out to work five days a week. The next thing that you could consider looking at is whether or not there's a reliable public transportation system in your city. And you might say, but I like driving. I prefer having my car where I have my privacy on the road and I can do what I want to. Well, by taking public transportation, it's actually not a bad thing. It's actually a great way to save money. Not only that, not only can you save money in terms of your, the cost that you would incur on, on gas and the wear and tear on your car, but you could also relax on the train or bus. You could stop, you could have a cup of coffee on the bus or the train, you could read a book or listen to your podcast without worrying about the commute or having to focus on that drive. So imagine driving for two hours, one and a half hours the way I did. I had to stay alert all the time. Whereas if I was on a bus or on a train, I could just sit back and relax as the driver of the bus or train got me to my destination. The next thing you could consider is whether carpooling is an option. Is there somebody in your neighborhood that works at the same place like you? Maybe you could drive one week and maybe the next week they could drive. So not only are you going to be saving gas and money that you're going to be spending on gas, but you could also save on the wear and tear on your vehicle. So that might be a great option. The next thing you could consider is whether now is the time to buy a more fuel efficient vehicle. 
And I'm not saying you need to run out and buy a Tesla on credit. Well, getting a Tesla would be great, and we are trusting the Lord to get one one day. However, what you could look at is, do you have a vehicle, let's say a V8 or V6, that's a fuel guzzler. It takes a lot of fuel to be able to get you from point A to point B. Maybe now is the time to downscale and to get a more fuel efficient vehicle, especially with the rising cost in gas. The ninth thing that you need to consider is maybe you need to start driving more conservatively. Aggressive driving, as defined by the Department of Energy, the USDE, they define it as speeding, rapid acceleration, and braking. So by driving aggressively, you actually lower the fuel efficiency of your vehicle by 15 to 30% on the highway and 15 to 40% when it's stop and go traffic. And as a result of either driving fast or accelerating fast, you're actually burning up more fuel than what you would have you just driven more passively. I know we like to get from point A to point B a lot faster. So maybe just factor that into your commute. Maybe leave a couple of minutes earlier so that you don't have to drive fast. And as a result of that, you can conserve fuel as opposed to just burning it up. The 10th thing that we, we should consider is maybe it's time to start buying food in bulk. If you find yourself in South Africa, we've got places like Macro and some of the wholesalers. If you're in the States, is Costco and Sam's Club. And I'm not promoting any of these by any means. But did you know by buying food in bulk, there's actually benefits to it? So from a fuel perspective, not only are you going to make less or fewer trips to the grocery store, but also if fuel continues to rise, as I mentioned earlier in, in this video, that they pass the cost of the increase in fuel onto you in the prices of the food that you're buying. So if you buy in bulk now, you might only have to go back to the store in two or three months time for these particular items. So therefore, the increase in month one or month two might not be passed on to you because you've already purchased the product. So consider whether or not you should be or could be buying in bulk right here, right now. And then as we wrap up this video, just two bonus points real quickly. Number one, if you've got a credit card or shopping rewards that could be converted to gas points, which allows you to pay less for gas at the pump, then make full use of that. I know that there are stores in the United States which have gas stations linked to it, that if you go into the store and you buy food and groceries and other items, that you could convert the points to reduce the amount that you're paying at the gas pump. In South Africa, I know that there are credit cards that you could do the exact same where they are linked to certain gas stations or petrol stations where you could then in turn pay less at the pump. Make full use of that in the day and age in which we live. And then the final thing is if you find yourself in the United States, make use of apps like GasBuddy which tells you what the cost of gas is at fuel stations in the region in which you find yourself. And yes, it might not be your favorite fuel station, but if you could pay 15 cents less at a, at, per gallon at a particular gas station compared to your favorite gas station, maybe now is the time to make that permanent switch because in the long run, 20 gallons and you could save 15 cents a gallon if you add it up over the next couple of months, that's a might be an extra tank of gas that you could be saving in the long run. And guys, as I close up, I, I want to ask you if there are any other tips that you've got for the viewers of this video that you've implemented that I might not have mentioned. Could you please comment below and tell us what that is so it can benefit all of us? I'm always looking for new things that I could do to help me and my family. Alternatively, if, if you've discovered something that you are going to implement, comment below what you're going to start doing right here and right now. And then as you proceed over the next couple of days, pause, think about this video, go back and rewatch it again and identify a handful of things that you could implement right here, right now to help you and your family as we have these rising increases in food and gas and things like that. And remember, God is still a good God. What's happening in the world right now is not caught him off God. He's still got plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you and your family a future and a hope. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. If you've not subscribed to the channel, click subscribe. For more videos like this, follow us at the Generous Lifestyle channel and I look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Bye guys and God bless.